Hello and welcome to another episode of All Times in a Podcast. You join us on Monday night, it's just over a day since Celtic drew one each way. Rangers at Celtic Park as they retain their six point advantage as we go into the final three games of the season. Just before we start, just like to give a shout out to our sponsors for this episode who are football prizes. They gave you great chances to win great prizes on their site. There's plenty of Celtic prizes up for grabs, but there's also a load of other hospitality tickets for some great games down south and in Europe and also a lot, a lot of the other prizes so if you go to football prizes find out more about that this week they have got a custom frames print of Ange Postacoglu and it's hand signed as well by the man himself so if you want to be me a chance of winning that go over to there and you'll find that and if you use the code 4 times 10 then you'll get 10% off your tickets as well so thanks to them but we'll get right into it Danny last week you says on here we only needed 4 draws to win the league we've got one of them but one step closer what did you make it yesterday? I another step closer to winning the league one of the four draws that will get us there. I thought it was a, a rubbish game. Like the last, I think all the games have been rubbish against them this year, to be honest. Games that have been kind of very low in quality. I think the only bit of quality was the 3-0 game in the first 45 minutes where we did play, uh, we played really good football for 45 minutes. I think most of the, all the games have been kind of even up to, apart from that. So I was not expecting anything much different than we got. I thought it might have been a wee bit better with Celtic playing effectively for the league, but should have been out of sight in the first half, really. thought we started quite slow and then grew into it and then the goal was was probably the first bit of play we'd put together the entire game. I thought it was a great goal. Jota did really well. Take it on it. I thought Maeda did really well. But I don't know. It kind of felt like it's the same. We kind of let them off the hook a bit. I thought, I said, Maeda just scored in Vahida. And then there was another couple of openings. But we never really, like, Kyogo didn't get involved in the game. And I, I don't know about, I don't want to criticise the manager because he's done a phenomenal job. But I think, I, I just thought the last two games against them, um, the league game, sorry, have, have proven why Jackie Mack should should play against them and I just thought it was a Jackie Marcus was a set I should have played I thought when he came on he won everything that was up to him he got the I think he got the most ridiculous booking in the world by the Rangers maestro John Beaton who consistently manages the game very well for them but it's a game it was poor in quality and Celtic were, were really sluggish and I thought we looked kind of tired throughout the game I thought Star, I thought Star felt was incredible I thought he was fantastic in the whole game but let down, thought he toiled. It toiled. Great play for the goal, and he had a couple of lovely passes. He put a great ball into Jota's head, but I just thought he lacked a wee bit of energy. I think I thought he really toiled after about 20 minutes. I thought Taylor, it was quite poor with the ball at times. I thought the whole team were. I think McGregor started the game by giving it away. I think he gave the ball away the first three times he had it. O'Reilly wasn't great, but then he puts his same about O'Reilly, and uh, he's always he's always wanting the ball, which is which is good. I thought Ma- Maeda, I don't know what he make him think physically. He's he's a brilliant uh, athlete. I think is you know, and he, he obviously brings something to the team. But I know he set the goal up for John. It was great, but sometimes when he gets the ball, I, I don't know if he knows what he's doing, but but he never stops and he hounds them in and out of possession. Kyogo was quiet. I spent most of the game asking Rangers players if they were all right. Jota was good. Really good, happy for him to get the goal. But I thought I let down by Ralston at the, the, the equaliser. I, I, I think he's levelled out something terrible the last couple of months. And I know he's hardly been in the team because Juranovic has established himself. But we, by God, we missed, we missed Juranovic yesterday. And their goal, it was... Really, really poor. I thought Joe Hart shouldn't get beat his near post either, but then Joe Hart had a great save to keep it out one each. But I just thought, I thought they're only, they only. I just thought Celtic looked a wee bit, no ideas, but they just looked a wee bit kind of tired and as if, I mean, it felt it felt very much like an end of season game yesterday. Um, and although a draw suited us, man, that suits them, there's. Um, and they, you know, they had a chance to win at the end, obviously, at the post. I just felt that. Going for the league, there was a kind of lack of urgency in Celtic in the last kind of 15 minutes. and uh, But an off step closer to the title and, you know, no damage done. No, exactly. I think everybody was sort of carried away in the sort of uh, sort of excitement of the chance to all but seal it uh, against them with a win. And I, I don't know, I'm, I'm slightly with you. Like, I've, I thought the performance wasn't up too much. I actually thought Rangers started pretty well. I thought the first 15 minutes they were... Uh, having the run of the game and I thought Callum McGregor was sort of left to run the midfield on his own. I, I was pretty disappointed with O'Reilly and Hattati and I know Hattati's come in for a lot of stick uh, over the last day or two but oh, the last day but uh, I, I think look, he came out in that interview last week with his, Jack, what, his blog post or diary or whatever it was that uh, he posted and 
he, he said that he, feel, he felt knackered at times and like you've got to trust that the manager and the coaching staff are, are aware of this and that they're managing him well but I think I think he started every game since Ibrox so it's like it's it's, it'll be interesting to see if that keeps up because he does he does he started so well when on his debut in January against Hibs and like you're never you're never going to be able to have that level of performance every game and like clearly it's no sense but I I don't know he just he it's it's completely understandable because he's played a season and a half of football like we're at regular break like he's had international duty as well uh, well no I know. He's not had as much as some, but like he's still been like it, it's been a taxing time for him this last year. But uh, he just to defend him. I thought he, I thought he did put that, that boy put in for Jota that Jota header. That I thought it was fantastic, and I think Jota just didn't really understand how much time he had. He could, I think he could have brought it down uh, and finished it, or I don't know. He just I thought his decision making could have been better in that aspect. And then there was one in the second half as well that he that Hattie put through and. I think O'Reilly flicked it on to Maeda, where Maeda should have scored as well. So, on another day, you're, you're uh, waxing lyrical about Hattati setting up two goals. Like So, I, I let, I, I'm not going to harp on about how uh, poor I thought he was. I thought I thought Jota and Maeda played well. Uh, obviously, Maeda's finishing let him down like, pretty poorly yesterday. He's got that one in the first half with a header, where I don't know if it is just uh, where he's not aware where he is in the box or if if you want to play this sort of worst case scenario and he's sort of just put off Ben McGregor coming out when he comes out and it's obviously the headers put wide and it was a great chance to uh, give us a goal but and this, the second one for me is terrible I think to put it out of the bar especially it's just like it's, it's an awful finish from him like it's, it would have sort of set us for the game because as much as I said the Rangers started well I thought after we scored we were well in control we were creating chances and even at half time, like there was like people who were sitting around about me we were, we were talking, you just you knew you needed that second goal, obviously with the memory of the semi final and everybody's mind, you sort of knew that they would have uh, a bit of pressure and when we missed a few chances at the start of the second half it did feel like that they were going to come into it and obviously they did. It's a, it, I, I think Ralston was pretty poor, especially like the amount of times that Kent seemed to get in front of him, like for our goal, like Maida does brilliant and Jota puts it in, but Barris it's just stood watching again and as much as Celtic fans are enjoying calling them born my back post and anything else, like I thought Alston was as culpable as that uh, on a few occasions and it was just that Ryan Kent didn't apply the finish because I, I thought that Kent had uh, a multitude of chances uh, thanks to Alston's poor positioning and just sort of lack of awareness of where he was. Uh, as you say, Danny, I think there's a lot to do with Josip Juranovic we're missing that we're, we're sort of used to a higher calibre now and I, I think that might be the story going forward in this summer that there's a few players in that squad who have done superbly for us this season who if the team's going to get better then there's a good chance that a few might get left behind because you've, I, I don't, just don't know if they have the ability to play uh, to the level that Angie's team's going to need hopefully next season in the Champions League but uh, obviously they, they score and from the end they sort, it sort of rock Celtic like we, we kept playing our game but like the subs the subs that we made obviously Jack and Marcus and Beaton get booked pretty soon after they come on and I thought that nullified both of them like uh, there was like, I agree that Jack and Marcus was winning things and don't get me wrong beating was fucking terrible yesterday uh, John beating I'm talking about he he let uh, Jack and Marcus just get assaulted on a few occasions and won the first half with Kyogo as well but on Jack and Marcus like the even the one that sick Alan went through and hit the post like Jack and Marcus is doing a head knock and beating let's play go uh, and I think Garfield leaves one on and Carter Vickers in the build up as well to that and thankfully did hit the post but uh, I thought that uh, near beat on and Jack and Marcus were sort of nullified when they were booked because there was one I think late in the second half as well where Ryan Kent burst through near beat on and uh, Anthony Ralston and fans were pretty raging and understand that none of them really put a, a challenge in them because it looked like Ryan Kent just drifted by but I think both of them were on a boot and just sort of uh, put them off putting that tackle in and I, I, I don't I know Abada had one ruled off for offside uh, late on but I, I thought we were pretty we could have managed the game better. I know we had, we did see it out for the draw, but I thought there was maybe I know the way Ange plays has never got to change, but there was times when like Joe Hart and players taking throw ins and free kicks, like they were just so they're almost too quick where there's got to be I, I think there's got to be a time when you've got to manage the game better when you realise that there's only one team who yesterday was a must win for 
and it wasn't us, we should have sort of looked to manage the game a bit better. We put ourselves in a few sticky situations, like the one when Joe Hart slipped, and uh, thankfully nothing came out. But I, overall, I'm delighted we're one step closer to the title. And I, I think there was a sort of realisation in Celtic Park where about three ago that I, I think people realised that it wasn't like, as much as the game might have. Uh, went in a similar pattern to the semi-final where we scored and then they equalised and sort of had the momentum of play after that. Like, there was a sort of realisation that it wasn't a one-off game where it was quite decided that day. Like, we we didn't need to go and chase and get the win. We just, we we were able to see that game out and effectively uh, finish the title race. I know there's still nine points to play for and we're six ahead, but I, I think when the sort of crowd realised that, you sort of realised that yesterday we would, everybody would, would have loved to have got the win but a draw was like not a bad outcome eh, with all things considered because last thing you would have wanted to do was it drop into three and then just even gain you a bit of nerves like I think the team done almost done the hard part up at Ross County where they responded to eh, the gap being cut to three points and eh, I, as I say I'm delighted we got it yesterday we were Losing, we've not lost any ground. I know it could have been better, but overall, can I really complain with it? Uh, Andy, what was your thoughts again? I, as you say, I mean, I, I, the result itself, I think, I think you, you noticed with the crowd once the realization kicked in that we didn't need to win the game. It was uh, obviously the mood picked up, but I, I, I made the point to a lot of people that wasn't the result you wanted, but in many ways, it was just the result we needed. Um, just don't lose the game, and that's what we got. Um, it's, uh, it's difficult because I thought in first half for quite a, quite a, quite a few spells we played really well and we could have had if, if we go in at half time or three and a half I don't think there's any raised eyebrows I think that would have been sort of a fair assessment of the first half but my aid is just he's just he's, he's pulled away out of that one for fear of getting himself hurt but he's just got to fling himself with it um, and then there was another couple of chances here and there and, even at times in the second half, I thought there was one rocky sticks out of the bar. Um, he's just leaning back, and it wasn't a, a like giveaway chance or anything. But I thought if, if he's hitting the target, there's a chance it's getting because the keeper was sort of pretty poorly sighted in position. So I thought I hit the target there. Um, then obviously there's the Abada one, and even the other one where Abada gets through and sort of Diallo brings him down. Um, it's three sort of half chances and things that come out about like that. Like, we were still creating chances, even though we really did drop off in the second half. It was, I'm not sure where that came from. I don't think it's because they started to dominating the ball. It was as if we were, I don't know, we just sort of dropped, dropped a gear. Like there was no, we weren't as fluid. I think obviously a lot of that, both fullbacks had a sort of fairly poor game, and obviously a massive part of the way we play comes through the fullbacks getting inverted and getting in the ball. But look, like Ralston, I, I think we sort of seen a bit sort of route. I don't want to have two arsenal, but it was maybe a sort of revert to the player that we expected. He just wasn't going to be able to cut it at the way that we wanted, sort of the, the manager wants to play. And I've said before, I think Juranovic is one of our most important players. And I think you've seen that. Like Even Taylor, like I said, Taylor was poor as well. Um, so I think the fullbacks were a big issue for us. Um, but I think you made a good point in Hattati as well. It's, he's obviously tired, but I think it's he, he wasn't the only one, sort of. That had a poor game. I think he's just getting highlighted a lot because obviously his comments. But you're right, he's played a season and a half of football, and then on top of that, when he does go on international duty, he's fucking flying halfway across the world to play. Um, he, he would just be mentally jaded, which is one of these things. But if the manager's choosing to play him, then I agree. He's, he, the manager sees them every day, the manager trains with them every day, sees the work they put in. Look, he's obviously doing it for a reason. Um, I think. It's pretty clear the manager doesn't pick his favourites and he's not picking somebody just because he signed them. Um, I mean, I think even with the lack of game time you've seen with Eddie Gucci, I think it's fairly clear to me that the manager picks the team that he believes is best place to win as that game. He doesn't pick favourites or like you said, just because he's signed to Tati, he wants to stick by him. I don't think there's any of that. Um, but I've got to agree with Danny. It's, I think that game showed us just how much we miss Jack and Marcus. I think he's so important, particularly in a game like that. Um, because it's they just did not like it when he came on one but Goldson looked so uncomfortable um, and it gave us that wee bit of respite at times like he was just bringing the ball in and then sort of getting it under control and knocking it to a wide player knocking it to a midfielder just giving us that wee bit of rest to sort of get players out of the position they want to be and I think when you do have a player like that I think you're 
your rugged cheese, your O'Reilly's. I think they play off somebody like that a bit better. So I think it's, it's something we missed, but as has already been mentioned, the fucking that idea referee just. He'd done Rangers the biggest favour he could have with booking Jack Marcus. It never a card in a million years, but he's booked him to. to he's nullified so much of his game with that press um, and, and the way he plays because he puts himself out, but he also works his fucking ass off. Um, something awful, and it's again, he don't notice a drop off when like Kyogo comes off for him. Like the, the press doesn't change, he's got the same attitude and same application on there. Um, but it's again. Staff felt imperious, you all are buzzing for him, getting that goal, you've seen what it meant to him, you've seen his celebration, but the big one, the, the standout was, was Starfield, he just stood up to be counted, he's had so many critics this season, he still gets critics, um, even before it, just listening to a couple of pundits and all the rest that we're talking about, targeting him, and if, um, I can't remember who it was, it was saying about Sakala's pace, maybe hurting him and all this shit, but I think we all seen Starfield and just how good a defender he actually can be. Um, I think he made one mistake to memory, but he recovered. Um, I think that was the first off. Aside from that, I don't, I can't think of any mistake. I thought other than that, he, he was brilliant. Um, but again, he, he showed the recovery, which is a big thing because you will make mistakes. You're, you're a football player, you're not a robot. Um, but again, it's on just on before I, I, I'll let you come back in there, Dan. It's, I've got to agree that. The heart thing, it seems to be he's always just wanting to get the ball and go again, but at times it's... There was times where they would have a corner late on in a game, eight if minute or so, and we've not even got him there up at the halfway line, but then right away, Hearts wanting the ball doing it, they play out, and I'm thinking just, we've no urgency to win the game here, just to take the fit off the gas a wee bit. Um, give the players that we give them a couple of seconds to obviously get up the park, get a breather, sort of nullify their pressure um, because I mean, when you do go into Europe next season, it's the Champions League and there will be spells where teams have all that pressure. I think it's that streetwise thing we've spoken about a million times. Um, we see it when we play certain teams in Europe all the time. It's just a wee bit more sort of street sense that you don't always need to be well. You've got the philosophy and that should never change. There's just got to be a moment or so where just just take the fat off the gas, reset, let the players get up and then start a game for the back because you're going to start with a bit a pass to one of the defenders anyway. Um, but trust them that they'll build it. Um, it's just that, that that was the only thing I'd build up. But overall, don't lose the game. That's the most important thing for me, darling, and we did me. Aye, absolutely, Andy. As you say, the most important thing was getting out of there. Uh, we Being defeated, obviously, it would have been great to get the win and set up a, a situation next Saturday where... We only needed the point to officially seal it. Now it looks like it's going to go to, well, it can be decided on Saturday because we play first. But later, hopefully if we get the win on Saturday, we can uh, win it at Tanadice or maybe even sooner if Rangers fail to beat Dundee United on Sunday when they play. But uh, Danny, I'll bring you back in on uh, Carol Starfield. You highlighted him for praise in our group chat yesterday. What did you make him out? I thought he, he was excellent as well. I sort of echo what Andy says. There was even uh, one in the second half where he brought the ball at defence like, superbly and I think it led to the Maeda chance, but uh, another solid performance for Starfield. Ah, and I've been slagging folk for saying it all season, but yesterday was his best game in a Celtic jersey. Um, I thought he was brilliant. I thought he started the game really well. Um, and he was... I thought him and Carter... But I thought Carter Vickers played there as well, would be fair. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I thought uh, Starfield the whole game was was exceptional. Um, his timing, his positioning. There was one I think that I remember in the first half where um, he just think was it Sakara get the ball and he tried to beat him for pace and um, he just seen him out of the park. I think yeah, that might have been the one he made a mistake and then he, he got back. But that one when he brought the ball out of defence, I thought well, you keep going. Um, and that was something that annoyed me yesterday about Celtic was the amount of time. It was usually it was McGregor, McGregor, Starfield, Carter Vickers, Taylor and Ralston. But they always had about 30, 40 yards of space. And they just weren't running into it and they were cutting back and passing the ball and I thought they could have you know, Starfield showed a wee bit of which was which was good to see. But I just I thought Starfield was brilliant. I thought it was really, really good. Um I think he's had a great season. Um, much maligned when he came in and um, he maybe took a couple of weeks to settle but I think he's been he's been brilliant and uh, I know Hollander done him at Ibrooks for their goal in the one nothing game at the start of the season but 
he just kept consistently getting better. And yesterday, I thought he was outstanding. And um, I thought he was Celtic's man in match yesterday. I think they gave it a Jota, but I thought uh, Starfelt was was by far and away Celtic's best performer. Um, I just on the game again. I just don't think the team. I don't think we settled at all. Um, certainly in the first half we didn't settle, and I thought it was kind of hundred miles an hour. And I know that's the way Ange likes to play, quick attacking, but. I just thought the team never really settled and everything that they were trying to do, it was all kind of one-touch passing football and it really was not on at times. Um, and like Taylor was trying to feed Maeda down the left and they were trying to get... And I just thought half the time the passes for Taylor and Maeda each other were not on. Um, and then at the end, it was a bit mad at the end. It was frantic, I think. As, as I just said that they didn't show any urgency to go and win the game. At the same time, when they had the ball at the back, they were trying to knock it about. Hart was trying to take quick like, goal kicks and stuff when it wasn't when it wasn't really on. It was just it was a, a bit of a mad end to the end to the game. But no, Starfield can be very proud of himself. I thought he was excellent yesterday. Um, and he's been you know his his name's not been mentioned in any player of the year conversations. And well, there's definitely players that. Probably merit it a wee bit more. I think Starfield's been really, really good for us this season. I definitely, I know it's uh, there's a few in the team who I think will sort of fall under the category of unsung hero when it comes to like, the award season. I know there was a few given out last night. Celtic had their own, and uh, the PFA one was on as well. And they'll just touch on that. I know we're not at the end of the season yet, but it was great to see Celtic being uh, sort of acknowledged for their efforts uh, early course of the season. We had Ange winning PFA Manager of the Year, Cal McGregor won Player of the Year, Abada Young Player of the Year, and how good a season this has been. And I think it's just been, I know, I know it's still work to be done, but it's been beyond what any has sort of imagined when Ange was announced about 11 months ago. Hard to argue with any of them, to be honest. I think the manager fully deserves it. Um, just to start with him, I think we've, we've spoken about it a million times. We've all seen the clips. It'll be gone by Christmas. Who is he? And who? Blah, blah, blah. And then aside for that, we were even all sceptical. Um, obviously, if he always back the team and um, everything like that, but at the same time, we all knew how much a sort of challenge it was. Losing Edward, losing Christie, team just a complete mess. Um Scott Brown or anywhere, change a captain say just really was just a, a bit of a disgrace um, that we even let it get to that but manager came in and turned that run, turn us into a double winning side um, again it's just leaps and bitters I don't think MD really would have you, know, you can say he spent this and spent that but look at the state, even the, the way we started the season um, sort of dropping points and it was a wee bit rocky, but the manager sort of stuck to his guns, and we only really sort of got to bring to sort of really bulk out the squad in the January window. Um, and again, it's no easy to sort of make that work, and you've still got to buy the players and bring them in and, and and get the results at the end of the day. Um, just phenomenal for we were last season, what he done, and had us competing in four fronts at one stage. Ah, you don't you don't win everything, but we got the one we wanted, um, and it sets us up for it. For next season, um, just makes me excited to see what he can do. But thoroughly deserved for the manager. Um, he's he's been outstanding, and again, just just the, even the character himself, phenomenal. Um, McGregor, it's uh, it was I thought when when the discussion was happening, and um, before obviously the nominations came out, he was one that I don't know maybe slipped under the radar a wee bit for certain people. I think it was it was easy to sort of look to the the superstars if you like, where he is and Keogh goes and. Don't get me wrong, I reckon if Kyogo's probably get the full the full season at it, um, it would have been hard to get it away from him because I would have just seen him scoring more goals. But McGregor's been phenomenal to take off of Scott Brown, a guy that's won fucking a ridiculous amount of trophies. To do that and to go about it in the way he has, um, it's just phenomenal to take it. take the captain's armband at Celtic and wrestle back a league title, really sort of unite the team. And, and he leads by example, and he's not just going to the park shouting and balling at players and sort of acting, acting like the big hard captain, he, he leads by example um, he, he takes the bunny and makes something happen, he's one he's one of the sort of players and I think Callum McGregor's been phenomenal um, just such an important player for us, so I thought that was thoroughly deserved I think the goal of the season for Rogic is just one of the ones, everybody's got their favourites, um, whether you want to see somebody skipping by three, four players and sticking in or a long range hit but big Tom was just it's just Tom Rogic, um, but I thought 
Yeah, that that could have went either way. I was sort of swaying myself and went go to pick for that, but I think it's a it is definitely a, a an honourable winner. Um, and again, I've had a young player of the year. I, I don't think there was any argument, but I mean his stats. His stats could have seen him win player of the year as well. Um, I I think that would have been absolutely fair. But for, for such a young player to to be to be putting up the figures again, came on yesterday was wanting to get in the ball, wanting to drive at people, wanting to make things happen. Unlucky to be honest, not to get his name in the score sheet. But he's he's a, he's a player that's only going to improve and under a, under a manager as well. But to come in hit the ground running, new country, thoroughly thoroughly deserved for young Abada. Um, but it's, it just shows you like, how much can change in such a really but it's a little period of time. Um, so much has obviously been made about us losing losing the 10 and everything else. And as I said, like, for what the manager's done and sort of turned these players, really turned them around. I mean, there was talk at one point, I don't, get, I don't know, it's just goal or the season he won. It was, he didn't get a sort of player of the year award. But again, he's another one that completely turned his, his fortunes in and it's like, like Lennon was looking, looking off on and accepting bids to go and play in Qatar. There was a lot of talk about that. Um, McGregor, there was there was still talk about him. Maybe it's time he moves on. But to go and sweep all the awards, I think just says so much about what the manager's been, what the manager's done. It's it's just it's it's impressive. It's nothing nothing less than nothing, not less than they deserve really. Um, and as I say, it just it just makes me want to see what. what what he can do next, um, because I, I really, I've got to just, uh, I've seen his comments about really the, just building again and going forward, and I, it just, as I said before, it just makes me excited to see what the manager's actually going to be capable of when he's getting more time with him. He's, there's still there's still room in that squad to improve, there's still bits of deadwood here and there that he's, you know he's going to clear out and be, free, be his own signings that we've seen so far and anything to go by, then it's only going to be quality that with the right attitude and application that comes in, and that's only a good thing for the squad going forward. But all the awards thoroughly deserved. Um, some stiff competition for, for their own teammates, but thoroughly deserved. And uh, yeah, it's, I think it's hard, hard to argue with them. I definitely it's just great to see them get some recognition. Obviously, the biggest award of all uh, will be handed out in a few weeks. I know some people think that's the league title, but it is, of course, the four times uh, end of year award. So look out for that. We'll have them up in a few weeks. So get some special things planned for that so be be sure to keep an eye out for uh, them when they come but Danny we move on to Saturday lunchtime uh, we're at home to Hearts the last time that uh, Robbie Nielsen brought his team to Celtic Park they lost 1-0 obviously it was that game that caused Crawford Allen the head of the referees to come out and uh, 24 hours later try and get Kyogo's goal disallowed but on that day he he described it as a battle for second place, but a lot has changed since December. And how are you feeling going into this game? As Celtic look to be, well, they're in the same position as they were on Sunday, where a win will all but seal it. How do you see Saturday going? Um, I think we'll win. I think it'll be a good game. I think Hearts are uh, obviously going to finish third, no matter what happens towards the end of the season. Hopefully, they can be rewarded with a fine season with a Scottish Cup trophy at the end of it as well. Um, but I think I think Hearts have chucked it as far as the league's concerned. I know they did a good one at Tannadice last week, but I think this week they were, I think it was a pretty push on each draw and a couple of Hearts fans that have gone to Twitter weren't they too impressed with it. So I think they've probably just got all their eyes in the cup final. Obviously the fans will not want to um the fans will not want to be letting their, their cousins down, they will want to come and um shout and abuse and that for ninety minutes and hopefully they see their team taking a tanking. Um but Celtic need to be up for it. I, I said yesterday that if Sakala had a score, they would have worried about the league. And no, because they had been doing to three points, just the, the nature of what happened, the way the game went. Um, I would have been quite worried if we'd have lost that late on. Um, uh, and if you'd have said to me, you know, before the game, oh, you'll get beat here, uh, wouldn't they have been that worried about the league? But if the way the game went, I was starting to panic. And I was thinking, God, if they were to nick a winner, all the momentum's with them, etc., etc., we need to play three other games. Uh, but I think the getting away, getting away with the draw, a week taking, I think I think you'll see a performance like you did at Ross County, and we'll uh, I think we'll score a good few goals, and it'll just be um, it'll be a good Saturday afternoon. Um, oh God, what a shot that was, Judd Trump. <laughs> Sorry, um, it'll be a good Saturday afternoon to have, uh, and I'm a wee bit, I'm a wee bit thingy because we can't clinch it. Um, I, I always prefer us clinching it rather than 
Um, like I was winning, and then the next day, Rangers drawn. I remember Ronnie Dyla's first league title. It was um, Aberdeen get beat at Paradise, which kind of made us win the league. So, um, I always prefer us to win it. But um, after you know last year and whatever, I'll take take the league anyway. It can can come. So if we win, it puts all the pressure on them. Is it going to the are they at home and United? Um, so they only win. So bye. Looking forward to another good Saturday. I definitely. I, I know that as you say, Hearts got a nil nil draw with us currently at home on Saturday. Uh, I always think they're sort of having a cup final in the background. It works both ways because I get that you're all oh, you're a focus is surely going to be on that. But at the same time, you've got to think that if you're not playing, then there's a good chance you'll lose your place. So. I don't think it'll be an easy game by any means on Saturday. I think that, as you said, Hearts will uh, want to let their ugly cousins uh, praise them by getting something at Celtic Park. But I, I can't really see... I, I think Celtic should have... Well, I know it's been the case for a few months now, but we've, we, we'll have the full week to prepare. We should be fresh. I, I would like to think we'll see a few changes uh, going into Saturday. Uh, but uh, there's no real excuse that we shouldn't get the job done and all. But like we did joke, if, well, Danny mentioned it last week when we said four draws would do it, and obviously that's still the case, but you just absolutely don't want to. Uh, that's not the way I like to win it because I, I just want to get it done now. I know what Danny's saying that if we win and they drop points on uh, at home to Dundee United on Sunday, then uh, we would obviously win it that way. But I, I don't know. that That is possible, of course. I know. When Dundee United last went there, it was a stupid handball that cost them that day from getting something. So you, know, you never know, but you would think that they would uh, win that game as well. That was, the, that was the four times Christmas Day out, if you remember. Aye, that was... We all had money on the United at 60-61. Yes, that, aye. That was, I, I could have been glorious. It was a great day, great beverages, terrible company, but it was... Aye, <laughs> I, 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 I'm... <laughs> the roof did the United won that game. Yeah? Uh, that <laughs> we <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The fucking best thing about that day was me and Andy on karaoke. That was a bit of the highlight of that day. But uh, no, hi. As I say, you never know what's going to happen Sunday. I mean, maybe if they if we win on Saturday and they drop points, then they uh, will just head to George Square just in tribute to last year. But you never know. I would like. I'm the same as Danny. I hate winning it when you're not playing. I'd like Celtic to be the ones that see it out. And I know Tanner Dice is the earliest we can do that now. But uh, much the same. It, whatever way we win it, I'm going to celebrate it because it's been, you know, it's only two years since we last won it, but it feels like an eternity, so I'll be delighted to get our trophy back. But Andy, how do you see this one going on Saturday? Hey, I'm, I'm with Danny, to be honest. I see it being fairly similar to the, the Ross County game. Um, I don't really see a scenario where that doesn't happen. Um, I, I think it's probably one of the ones that, because of the result, and ultimately no lose in the game. I, I think. Weirdly, even though it was a draw, I think players will take confidence for it. Um, I reckon, again, we'll maybe see a couple of changes in the team. It'll be nothing too drastic. Again, I don't think the managers want for that at the best of times, but it will be nothing too drastic because ultimately there's nothing's won yet. Um, so I think it will, will be the case that we'll go out and just get the job done. Um, but I think we will see a couple of changes. Um, but again, it's only going to... Who would the changes be, Andy? Give me your lineup. Um, I reckon... I think mean, you're probably going to see the same back line. I, I, I don't think we've, we've really got the facility to change it. Um, you, you see the keeper on the back line will stay the same, provided they're off it, obviously. Um, McGregor will still be there. Then I think I think Rogic is probably going to come back in. Um, and there's been a lot of talk about Tumble for Hitati, um, which hasn't happened as of yet, but I, I don't know whether it was just a sort of continuity thing. Um, but I think this will be when we see sort of Tumble coming back in for Hitati and then uh, sort of across the front three. Um, I, I see uh, I see Jackie Marcus coming back in for a start, to be honest with you. Um, I think you will play as well. And then uh, it could it could lead away for, for me that he came out for a badder. Um, that wouldn't surprise me. I think the front three will be the one we see the most changes in, to be honest with you. Um, but again, it's... I think you've you've it's it's difficult. Like you say, I mean, how do you justify that that many of them to be honest with you? Like they all offer so much and they all have offered so much. But I think you'll be the one, especially with getting that goal again, he's scored scored in Dingwall, scored against Rangers, so he'll keep his place there. Um I do something tells me Jackie Marcus is going to come back in. Um 
But I mean, it, it wouldn't even surprise me to see Kyogo sort of move into that middle um, at that at that point. But I do, I, I see, I see the great striker coming back into the team. Um, but the performance, I, I think the team will, I, I think they themselves will be right up for it. I think they want to, they want to finish strong. And I, I just, I, I think we will be relentless. I think even when it's mathematically done, um, whether that happens when and Rangers make an RC after we day play Hearts, I think. Even if the title was done, get into Tana Dice, then Mother will last year of season. I think you will see us be relentless. You will see us just go at it. Um, and I don't think that will change. I hopefully we do. Just we, if we do what we need to do, then that's what matters. It doesn't matter what happens elsewhere. Danny, hey, you get any arguments with Andy's lineup? I think Jackie Marcus seems like the obvious one. Hey, maybe Tom Rogic as well. Hey, Jackie Marcus obviously got that great goal at Tyne Castle that uh, proved to be the winner the last time we played. If you, who would you line up with? As Andy said, I think the defence is sort of set just now, just through lack of options, Melanie. Ah, yeah, I don't. I, I would play Turnbull in the midfield instead of Hattati and Rogic um, instead of Riley, um, and obviously McGregor's there as well um, up front. I would. I'd go Jagabarkis. I'd go Jagabarkis, Kyogo and Jota. Um, nothing against Maeda, I feel like I'm bullying them, but I just, I'd like to see the two up front together in some sort of way. Um, I think the space that Jagabarkis creates could be really good for, for a player like Kyogo. Um, but who knows what will happen. Um, it'll be an ex- fairly expectant Celtic Park and hopefully the team can do the business. Um, but I don't He'll probably go with Kyogo, I think. He'll just stick to he'll just stick to what he knows now. Um he's not gonna make too many drastic changes, I don't think. But I would like to see Tumble get back in. I was actually surprised he didn't come on yesterday. Um I thought we were screaming out for him. I uh, play like him. Um someday he takes set pieces as well, but um I'd like to see Tumble get back in the team because I really like Tumble. I I I don't think we'll see too many changes, I think. I think there'll be two changes. I think Tom Rogic will come back in. I think it who will it be for? I think it might be for Matt O'Reilly. I think that Ange, as you say, seems to be pretty set with his team now, so I wouldn't be surprised to see Hitati continue. And I think Jiraki Marcus will come in. I don't know. I, I think Jota was brilliant on uh, yesterday, so I can't see it being him that uh, makes way. But I, I, would, I don't think he'd play both of them yet. I, I hope he does find a way to uh, include both, but I, th- I think it may be for Kyogo, and I think Dyson Maida will continue as well. Uh, and I think Celtic will have pretty, uh, as you say, it'll be an expected Celtic Park, and I think we'll respond to that and uh, have a pretty good victory on Saturday. And I'm going to go first with my prediction, and I'm going to say Celtic will win 3 0, and I think that Jackie Marcus will get two, and who who will get It'll be Jota that gets a third. Uh, Andy, who what are you going to go for for your prediction? Uh, I'm going to go for... Actually, I wanted 3-0. I'm, I'm just going to stick with 3-0. I do think that. Um, I reckon that Jack and Marcus will be in the score sheet. I also think Kyogo will be in the score sheet. Um, and we'll go and give the third to start it. He ends the season at some point by getting a goal. There's a free score for me. And Danny, what are you going for? I'll go for Bold Martin. Um, and Kyogo will get back in amongst the goals again. Uh, Turnbull will rattle one in for 30 yards, and I'm going to go Starfield. I think there's, there's not a player in that Celtic team that deserves a goal any more than he does, so he's going to get it on Saturday. Aye, hopefully. I, I, I think I'd be delighted to uh, Starfield to get a goal as well. It seems that I think most, most, players in, uh, most players in the team have got that sort of goal this season that's been uh, like even... Greg Taylor when he got his in the semi-final and he went on to lose but every player seems to have had that moment it would be great for Starfield to get one especially the way he's in improved performances as the seasons went on but I hopefully whatever happens Celtic come out with a victory uh, we will be back after that it'll probably be Sunday or Monday uh, hopefully uh, as much as I say I'd like Celtic to win it on the pitch themselves uh, we may be coming back as champions and trust me we'd be delighted to be coming back here on Monday's uh, champions and I we will speak to you next week just a, a thanks again to football prizes so uh, the prize again this week is an Ange Postcard Blue signed in custom frame Celtic shirt so it's a great prize to win and if you don't the, the great thing about this is if you don't win the main prize the Postcard Blue shirt then there's 12 instant ones as well so stuff like uh, Jack and Marcus signed montage, there's an Odds on Edward one there, and even this season's home shot, a 
this season's away shots. So plenty of chances to win. You can win for three pound ninety five. That's how much a ticket cost, and you can get ten percent off that by using the code four times ten. But aye, we will speak to you next week, and thanks for listening. Cheers. Oh.